516 all the way. All the way. Yeah. There's only three verses to it. But yep, that it is. Of course, I can't read it, but uh, it's up there. Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. For I know whate'er befall me, Jesus do with all things well. For I know whate'er befall me, Jesus do with all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, Cheers each winding path I tread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter, and my soul a thirst shall be, Gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. Gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior leads me, Oh, the fullness of His love, perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When I wake to life immortal, wing my flight to realms of day, this my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for your spirit to be among us and with us. Be with the speaker's words as we go through the lesson study and help us to learn of you because that's the whole reason for being here. For it is in the name of Jesus we ask this. Amen. I chose an interesting scripture today. It's Psalms uh, 143.5, but it talks of our Creator. And I'd never seen it before. It just popped up when I was randomly going through the Bible. Because sometimes just something catches your eye, you know. And I thought, you know, this is a good scripture that we really should pay attention to. And why is it locking up? Yeah, why is it locking up? There we go says, let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. I think this is a very appropriate uh, verse to keep in mind. Because what are we talking about? Uh, uh, today we're talking about the roots of Abraham. And... Um, I'm going to give you as much time as you need there, Kip, to 
explore that with us. Come on up. Do you want the orange mic or do you want the black one here? Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. The Roots of Abraham. It's so interesting. He wasn't called Abraham at this time. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your loving kindness, for giving us this example of a man with foibles, of a man without the perfect discipleship. We pray your blessing be upon us today that we can learn from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, let's take a look at Abram. Abram's departure from Ur of the Chaldeans. Genesis 12, 1 through 9. Why did the Lord call Abraham, a descendant of Shem, to leave his homeland and his extended family in Babylon? Yes, he had to he had to leave this highly populated city where his family would not be influenced by idolatry. Let's read uh, I'll, I'm going to open this Sabbath school lesson by reading chapter 12, 1 through 9. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I shall show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Haran. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed 
through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Mora. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed I will give this land. And there buildeth, builded he an altar to the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a, a mountain in the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and Hai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass, when he was come down, come near to enter unto Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Now, behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. That's very interesting, that whole passage. Why does the Lord still call his faithful followers to come out of spiritual Babylon? And this is found in Revelation 18, 1 through 4. Why does the Lord still call his faithful followers to come out of spiritual Babylon? It's so interesting. Why does God still call his faithful followers to come out of spiritual Babylon? Pardon me? He is a jealous God. He's jealous of me? He loves me. You know, you know, it's so interesting as we see the, the closing of Earth's history that the devil has had, has set up this circumstance where the kings of the earth are going to bow to the Pope. Now, we are given insights into what's going on. We have, we have seen that the Pope is going to be calling upon the nations to keep 
Sunday. And what does that do to the Lord? Yes. I am God. He changes times and laws. It's funny. He calls himself the representative of God and it has nothing to do with him. Yes. It's by reputation. Pope desecrates the true Sabbath. I'm sorry? Pope the true Sabbath. Yes. He does. And he does. But what has the Pope said? Don't worry about doctrine. Yes. When we get to heaven, we'll sort it all out. We'll sort it all out. And he's promised everyone heaven and eternal life, and it's a false promise. And who has he promised? Just Catholics alone? No, anyone who signed on with him. Yes. Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims. Yes. But what is Hail Mary? It's a false religion. It is a false religion, Marianism. It is praying to her and She's alive in heaven. thinking, yeah. but does that jive with the Bible? And of course, he made sure for her care yeah. by asking John at the foot of the cross uh -huh. to look to her as yeah. his mother. But she is soon to have her heart broken, broken because of his death. his death. Now, share a time when the Lord called you to make a break with your past and follow his leading. I loved baseball. And most of the games were on Saturday. And that was such a disappointment to me. 
Because whenever I would talk about dating a young lady or taking hold of the position of right field, my mother would bring me to my senses and she would say, you wanted to be an Adventist, you'd better show it. And lo and behold, I didn't even bother trying out. And I never asked a girl to a dance. Though one girl asked me to a dance. It was so interesting that two of us had the same Little League thoughts. Were there any other thoughts of things that the Lord called you to take a break from your past and follow his leading? And to touch those children. Mm -hmm. Children need to know that Jesus is coming. Mm -hmm. And if they don't hear that, they don't have all the facts to make their own choice. They need to know what the Bible says and how um, loving and accepting God is and how forgiving and how they need to turn to him. Um, for what they need in life. And I can I could only present it. I could only pray for it to them. Um, they have the ultimate decision. But when God said go, I went. And you went with me. Mm -hmm. I did. What a journey it's been. Well, let's turn now to Temptation of Egypt. Genesis 12.10. Shall we read that verse? Well, you have already read it. I know. But there was famine in the land, and Abraham went down to Egypt to buy There was famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there, for famine was grievous in the land. So why did Abram leave Canaan and travel south to Egypt? What problem do you see with this migration south? And of course, she was his sister, but through the, it was a half sister, yes. Different mothers. Now, what test did Abram face in Egypt and how did he respond? Well, he failed that one. <laughs> he failed. Well, 
Mm-hmm. Now, if we step back and retraced a few steps and we were in Canaan and there was a grievous, as the Bible says, a grievous famine. It's normal to go where the food is. And so who is the king of a thousand hills? God. Now, it's so interesting that Abraham spoke to God many times. Did he get permission to go to Egypt? It doesn't say so. It doesn't say so. It slipped his mind to just ask the Lord what he should do. As one person, Uncle David, he said, he says, you're supposed to be asking the Lord before this happens. Ask him to bless you. Abraham forgot that. But why did God, why did God treat Abraham differently? Doesn't God know everything? Yes, God knows everything. And so what was it that, what drew God to Abraham? Abraham went seeking God. Yes. And God found him. Yes. God was always there. They talk together. So the reason that God winked at these difficulties that, and we'll talk about others, these difficulties was that God loved Abraham. Now, what positive choice did Abraham make after he was expelled from Egypt? This is found in Genesis 13, 1 through 4. Yes. Everywhere Abraham went, he built an altar. And everywhere that Abraham went, prosperity followed him. Mm -hmm. And Lot, they had to separate because the animal husbandry had broken down. There were too much difficulties. Do you 
too many animals and not enough grass. Yes, not enough grass. Now, the interesting thing is, Lot had a choice. Abraham could have taken the first choice because he was the most important. Abraham should have, and Lot should have been wise enough and humble enough to say to his uncle, no, uncle, you take the first choice. That was the way of hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Abraham should have had the first choice, but he was gracious and he was forgiving and he wanted to make peace with Lot so he told Lot whatever you choose I'll go the opposite way so that we can part friends and remain kinsmen and yet our animals and all the herdsmen will be at peace now what's so interesting that Abraham was a form of Christ. And as you said, he was humble, he was gracious, and he was forgiving. And loving. So, Lot decided, boy, I like those cities. No. But it's, then, if it looked down in that valley, it looked like the Garden of Eden. So there was some remembrance of what that garden was like that had come from Noah on down through the generations. Yes. So. I don't think Lot intended at first to live in the city because Lot pitched his tents outside the city. Eventually, he in the city. And what happens to cities? They're sprawl. And before you know it, it came up to his edge and then it encircled him. It grew. Now, What were the consequences of Lot pitching his tent close to Sodom? He, he and his family began to be influenced by what was going on in Sodom. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fact, at least, I think two of his daughters married men of Sodom. Mm -hmm. I think it mentioned sons in law. Yes. Yes. And as it encircled him, he became appreciative of the economy of Sodom. But there was something else that he didn't fully appreciate, and that was how wicked the city was. Yes, yes. It's so interesting that that is indeed the case. And there was something else about Sodom. And that is it provided a modicum of safety. Yes, he was. Each city had tended to have its own army. Mm -hmm. Even Abraham had his own army. 
Yes, Abraham, but it wasn't that large. It was about 300 and such, yes. But there were several kings of, of other local cities. They made an alliance and then they were much stronger than Sodom and they routed Sodom and took all of the people. And as soon as Abram, remember he's not Abraham yet, Abram heard this. What did he do before he did something? He asked God what he, he should do. He asked God. Because he was a man of peace. He was not a man of war. He was a man of peace. Yes. And God said, Go. Go after them. Yes, he did. What were the consequences? Uh, how did the Lord affirm Abraham's decision to trust fully in him? There must have been four to one ratio of, of, the, his, of their armies as compared to his army. He did, and that made them even smaller. But, it made them seem bigger. yes, made them seem bigger, but what else influenced them? It was alcohol. Yes. It was eating as though there was. They won. They won. They yes. Had all this spoil. They had all these people who made slaves. And so they just took their rest and got drunk. And that's when Abraham came in and slaughtered all of them. He had the advantage, yes. Now, how did the Lord affirm Abraham's decision to fully trust in him? He said he was going to win. So what about us? When was there a choice that you made that had long-term consequences? Well, one choice that I made was to stay faithful to God while I was in the military. And I knew when I went to Vietnam, it was going to be a terrible experience unless I took God at his word now. And what happened was I went, I went to my first duty station and there they were supposed to test you to see where are you going to fit into this military. And I had always heard from my father, never volunteer. But I trusted God. And when I took the math test, I had never thought I could do such a fine job. And I gave the Lord the praise. But not enough. At any rate, the gentleman saw that I had one year of college physics and I had essentially blown away the math, math portion. I had 
successfully passed and I saw it on my GT score, the average person gets 100 from 95 to 100 percent. Uh, not percent, 95 to 100, and I got 146. And so he saw that. <laughs> and I looked at it and I couldn't believe it either. But he said, I can put you into the Army Air Corps and you'll be flying planes in Vietnam in just a matter of a few months. And he probably saw reenlistment re bonuses coming his way. And I said, well, what will I be doing flying planes? You know, this is not helicopters? He says, no, no, it's, this is, helicopters are too hard to fly. You'll be flying a plane. And I said, oh, and what, what kind of plane will I fly? Well, it's a Cessna push-pull. It's one of the rare ones that isn't made anymore, but, but uh, it's, a, it's got a standard propeller up front, and then it has a atypical standard propeller in the back. And so that if you get one shot out, then you still have the other to fly home. <laughs> and I said, oh, and, and what will I be doing there? Oh, you won't be killing anyone. <laughs> I said, well, that's very reassuring, because I told him, you know, I was a conscientious objector. I, I don't believe that I could kill anyone. And then what happened is he said, that's right. You will just shoot a locator rocket Right, you take a dive, you shoot the, the, uh, the rocket right where they're shooting at you. <laughs> and then you, you get out of the way. And that's when an F-101 or an F-4 will just kill everything in a radius of 150 yards. It was neither. It was it was just rockets and and um, rounds from the the plane. At any rate, I said I don't think I can do that. So he says, "All right, we'll send you to Fort Sam, and you can become a medic." So instead of making a hundred and eighty-nine dollars a month. No, excuse me, $1,089 a month. I will be making $89 a month, $1,000 less. And that was a lot of money at the time. Well, I had to follow, I had to follow God. And he blessed me. Yes, so... Were there any other people? Oh, there was one other additional thing, and that was I chose an Adventist woman. Yes. She, that was, that was one of my best choices. Now, anyone else? All right. So we have the deliverance of Lot in his house. Genesis 14, 1 through 4 and 11 through 12. Why was Lot taken as a prisoner of war? They did. Yes. There were quite a, quite a number of kings, and that these made war with Baira, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, and Shinab, king of Adma, and Shamiber, king of Boyim, 
and the king of Bela, which is Zoar. All these join together in the Vale of Siddim, which is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Chador Laomar, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. And if we move on to 11 and 12, and they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. And they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. So why did Abraham decide to risk his life in an attempt to rescue his selfish nephew, Lot? Yes. That's right. His love for Lot was great. And as we already know, he was a type of Christ. Rescue the lost. That's right. To go out and save that one sheep. Why did Abram refuse to take any spoils of war for himself? He didn't want anyone to say that these kings made him rich, especially the king of Sodom. He didn't want anyone to say that. He, he, it was God who had given him great wealth, and he didn't want any earthly man getting the claim. Yes. Uh, he gave all the other their spoils that helped him out because he mm -hmm. had other local uh, tribesmen join him in this. He didn't go just alone, but um, he gave them their portion. He returned everything to the people of Sodom and he gave um, a tithe to Melchizedek, which King of Salem is also translated King of Peace. Mm -hmm. And he was the priest of the Most High God, which is a very interesting thought because the sacrificial system in the priesthood was yet to be set up. Mm -hmm. There was no tribe of Levi. That's right. So that was to come in the future. So whoever this priest was is always been interpreted by many people in different ways. But if he was the priest of the Most High God, to me, Melchizedek was Jesus himself. He was our priest long before we were created. He was Jesus himself. And he, took, and he brought him a tithe of everything that was taken, returned. And so now everything was hunky-dory and everybody went back to their old ways? Well, I can understand Abraham. He was doing what was right. What happened to Lot? He must have taken maybe a different valley off apart from Sodom. He went right back into Sodom. Yes.
Yes. Yes. Now, who was Melchizedek? What stark contrast do you see between this king of Salem and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah? Like I said, they interpreted king of Salem means king of peace. King of peace. Make like unto. And so this whole chapter here, there's quite a bit about it. What are your thoughts about the blessing pronounced on Abraham by Melchizedek? Give me this, and you can have 
that. But the king of Kislevik came and he said, here, here's food, bread, and wine for uh, your sustenance. And Abraham gave him a tithe. And this was before the tithing system had been set up. Why did Abraham give Melchizedek one-tenth of all the goods received in this rescue mission? It was out of appreciation. He said, I could not have swept the enemy. It is yours. It is your graciousness that brought this about. And how did this witness of Abram influence his grandson, Jacob? And that's found in Genesis 28, 20 through 22. We're almost done. Twenty through twenty two of Genesis twenty eight. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house, and of all thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Yes. He was going to return. Jacob was, go was going to return a tithe also. In addition to returning a faithful tithe, what are some other ways we can express our thanks to God? Doing what he says. Surrendering, surrendering self. Yes, there are many ways that we can, we can follow God's example, including keeping his Ten Commandments, knowing that Christ came from the Father. There are many ways. Let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Jesus. That we can follow the example of Abraham. And learn to be appreciative. And to learn to come to you first before we do that we do right. We pray all these things in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. And I think I'm pretty close to being on time. Very good, very good lesson. <clears throat> so did Abraham do everything by himself? No, neither can we. He trusted in God. That's right. And we must also, as you said, trust in God. The closing song is more about Jesus. Shall we go ahead and stand and sing? Jesus I would know More of His grace to others show More about healing mercy More of His love who died for me More, more about Jesus Love you, darling.
we can get loud a little early this morning. How's that sound? Let's go ahead and close with a word of prayer. Father, we need to see you. We need you in everything we do, just as Abraham did. Trusting you and asking you to show himself, show yourself to him in a way so he could full, see the depth of your love. And then he gets the order to go to Mount Moriah and offer his son. He saw the depth of your love when he realized what it cost to save us from sin. Save us too, Lord. Be with us and help us to learn more about you. For it is in Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. <laughs>